We all know there's at least two sides to every story. And in the case of today's gospel reading, I count there's at least seven. Let's look at how Jesus' miracle of exercising thousands of demons from a man impacted so many. First, the demons, who called themselves legion because there were probably somewhere between 3,000 and 6,000 of them in this man. We know this because at that time, a Roman legion was three to 6,000 men. While still possessing the man, they first encountered Jesus and instantly recognized him as Christ. From their perspective, he was here to send them into the abyss. Saving the man was not their concern. They may have felt fear and they were definitely self-interested. But being captives of Satan and as his servants, they were also compelled to do damage to Jesus' ministry. They easily could have known that those who relied on the pigs for their livelihoods would be angry at Jesus for allowing the pigs to drown. So why not possess the swine and lead them to their destruction? What an easy way to destroy Jesus' ministry in the area. Just a quick run into the lake. What the demons didn't know is that it wasn't time for Jesus' final judgment and that the power of God's love for his children could and will win against the love of money and material items for those who believe. Then there are pigs. Did you know pigs could swim? And I'm sure they were confused, but I'm really not here to talk about the pigs' point of view. Um, seriously, the owners of the pigs who relied on them for money were likely furious. Rather than being in awe of the miracle they just, under, they just witnessed, they were understandably upset at losing the things that they valued the most, the things that, re, that they survived on. From their point of view, they were harmed, and perhaps they were only concerned with obtaining justice. However, their inability to see the bigger picture due to being too focused on their money prevented them from considering the riches that were waiting for them in heaven. God never proclaimed that money was a sin, just the idolatry of it was. Their love for wealth blocked them from the relationship that was worth even more. How about the demon-possessed man? He had been tormented for quite some time. He ran around naked. He lived isolated in tombs. His behaviors were strange and scary to the people who observed him, and probably also to himself. He was often put in shackles to, so that the people who lived in the city could control him. But in his fits, he would break them and run around erratically. I can't imagine what being possessed, much less by thousands, must be like. His suffering was prob probably led to feelings of terror and hopelessness. And we know that those feelings are not of God. However, when Jesus exercised the demons and freed this man from his bondage, he was changed. He was healed from the inside out and was able to experience peace. I'm sure for the first time in a very long, long time, the man felt the love of God and understood it for the freely given gift that it is. Afterwards, the man had a strong desire to follow Christ. He wanted to be with Christ. However, he submitted to God's will and did, and did what Jesus asked of him. He became the first apostle to the Gentiles, and I have no doubt that he experienced boundless joy like he had never known before his healing. Think about the people who were given the gift of being able to witness this miracle. What could have been going through their minds? I imagine if we here were to observe something like that, we would be astonished, amazed, we would also likely fear, feel doubt. What we saw might cause fear or maybe some confusion. The actual witnesses had to make a choice to believe in what they saw and ultimately have faith that Christ Jesus is the Son of God or to carry on their lives, which may have been very, very nice of the freedom God offers. I imagine that there were people who ended up believers and some who did not. And regardless of which way people went in their belief, I'm pretty confident that an encounter with God like that changed all of them forever. What about Christ's perspective? 
If the Gospels have taught us anything about Jesus, it's that he has always knew what he was called to do, and he faithfully did God's will. He didn't worry about destroying the livelihoods of pig owners because that was temporal. And if it was God's will, their livelihoods could be restored. He didn't worry about not casting the demons into the abyss because Jesus knows that he will one day return to the earth to judge all, the living and the dead. He didn't worry about the man because Jesus knew that God had a mission for him to share the good news with the Gentiles. What Christ was focused on was using his authority over the demons to do God's will and to commission the man who he healed to a ministry of telling everyone what God had done for him. What about God's point of view? I can't and won't even pretend to know what that was. I do know that demons are charged with destroying our relationship with God, but in the end, it is God who reigns over all, and demons are powerless over those who trust God. What about us? As people who have heard the word of God in this story specifically, what is our perspective? When we study this scripture, we learn a little from everyone else's perspective. We know that demons exist, not only as fallen angels, but as also personal things that trap us and corrupt us and drive a wedge between us and God. Maybe it's addiction or pride or any other form of sin. Maybe it is the hurt we feel from past relationships or grudges we hold. Maybe it's fear and doubt. Regardless of the demons we individually face, we know that through Christ, they can be driven out. And as Jesus did for the man in the story, he can separate our crazed behavior from the person that God created. Once we accept the gift that God has given us, we can experience the hope and joy that comes from him. One of the most exciting parts of this story for me is the idea that by following and being witnesses of Jesus, we can become who God has designed us to be, just as the possessed man became the one he was supposed to be. That is the change I believe we are all looking for. Whether considered individually or altogether, I think the various points of view all lead to the same thing. God wants us to have faith in him and share his message. Certainly as humans who are still learning to trust God, we may deal with fear, be self-centered, or have some sort of lack of understanding. But if we do what God asks, we will not be confined by and be slaves of Satan. By accepting the Lord's gift, we are free to follow Christ and be an heir with him in God's eternal kingdom. Amen.